Hello everyone. So today's video is about As a God Might Be by Neil Griffiths. Many of you will know Neil from his channel. Uh, if not, I suggest you go along and find it. He is uh, generally saying extremely interesting things about books and about the, the writing as well as the reading of books. But um, his novel As a God Might Be came out earlier this month. It is a, a substantial volume, as you'll see. It's 600 pages long. Um, I had it on pre-order. I was very excited when it uh, finally arrived. Um, and I have been reading it over the last two weeks. Um, it's unusual for a book to take two weeks for me to read through. Normally when I pick something up and sort of 400 pages or so, I will probably finish it within a couple of days. It's just the way I, I tend to work. I read fast and I tend to read only at the weekends. Um, but this novel took quite a lot longer to read, partly because it's long, so it's, it's 600 pages long, um, partly as well because it rapidly became clear that it was something that I needed to read slowly and carefully. So I largely have a couple of reading modes when I'm reading novels. Poetry is a bit different. But when I'm reading novels, I tend either to read very, very fast for story, um, and so when I read, for example, Camilla Shamsi's Home Fire as part of my booker list, um, I read that extremely fast. Or I read more slowly and I'm reading for the language and almost with a, with a writer's view of, oh, it's interesting that they did that. Why do, why do I think they made that decision? How does that work? What impact does that have on the rest of the structure of the novel? What role does that character play? All of those sort of more analytical sort of things. And that tends to come when I read a bit more slowly. Um, most novels I read very fast, and even even literary novels like um, John McGregor's Reservoir 13, for example, um, I read I read very very fast. Um, so unusual for something to be read over over the course of of two weeks. And this novel, it's a, it's a very it's a very unusual 21st century literary novel. Let me start there. Um, and I had I had a number of strong feelings as I was reading it, actually, um, both as a reader and as a writer. So as a reader, I think my my reaction was mostly one of surprise that somebody had written a novel like this published in 2017. I know it's taken Neil nine years to write. So early 20th century, a 21st century novel. This novel um, feels utterly Victorian. Um, it is uh, Victorian in, and maybe people will disagree with me here, go ahead and disagree. Um, it's Victorian in its length. It is Victorian in its scope. Um, although both of those things could also be applicable to other big uh, late 20th century novels, so I'm thinking of things like Jonathan, Jonathan Franzen's Corrections. Most of all, this book is Victorian in its topic. It is a book which is heavily about theology and the experience of religion and the experience of God, all of which are different things, um, and addresses that not only, all of, all of which is again are Victorian topics, and addresses that not only within the mind of one man, which is how I would expect a sort of 20th century version of this to run. So I'm thinking of things like William Golding's The Spire, um, which is an experience of God and theology and religion within the mind of one man. It's quite a slim book. Um, it, not only, it not only does that, but it also looks at how this affects the whole of his social context and it complicates that social context extensively. So it is both a London middle class uh, social context, but also an outside London village life, um, a range of characters from different socioeconomic backgrounds, men, women, um, religious, non-religious, etc, uh, etc. Et so it does all of that. Um, it also has a very strong plot and story which is brilliantly structured to hold the piece together as a whole and runs um, pretty well perfectly throughout, actually. Um, and finally, overall, it has a structure. So it's structured on the, on the Bible. So it has a section which is New Testament, a section which is well, Old Testament, a section which is New Testament, and a section of Apocrypha at the end. So it, is, it also has a, a real engagement with the Bible as a serious 
not only part of cultural tradition, but also something that we are living with today, if you are living with the themes that, that are being addressed in this book. So all of that surprised me. It's not a novel, and this is written from one of the cover quotes as well, it's not a novel that um, that I thought I would read as a contemporary novel. It's a very unusual contemporary novel. It also surprised me as a writer because... So my, my writing tends to be very um, psychologically focused. I am interested in experiences that are in some way spiritual within a context of that, although I tend not to address them from a religious perspective as, as this novel does. Um, but my, my writing and the writing I tend to be most interested in is often very concise and precise and deeply internal. Um, and this novel is none of those things. Uh, it is not the sort of novel I would have expected to either enjoy reading or find inspirational and thought-provoking from, uh, from the point of view of my own writing. And I did find uh, both of those things um, within it. So, um, so what is what is this novel? It is the story of a middle-class, middle-aged English man living in uh, nice, expensive suburban London, uh, who has a an experience which he interprets as an experience of God, which leads him to go to the West Country and build a church. And he builds this church with the assistance of a number of uh, young people locally and the dynamics of those people and the dynamics of that family he creates versus the family that he has left back in London, his partner and children in London, um, is a big part of what the novel's about as well. So it's, it's about family, it's about uh, religion, it's about spirituality, it's about big, big big, big themes. Um, and it addresses these themes in a very serious way. So a lot of writing as well, and again, I'm, I'm guilty of this, tends to come at its, at its serious topics in a relatively oblique way. So um, my, uh, my first novel, for example, is, is about depression, in a sense. But I have at no point uh, come into that novel and said, guys, this is about depression. This is what I, as the writer, think about depression. This is what people over the history of thinking have thought about depression. And here it is all laid out within the context of a compelling story. And here's some additional stuff of my own as well. That's not the way most, that's not the way I write. It's not the way most people now write either. But this, this novel is different because it does include vastly long monologues or conversations, again, much like a 19th century novel, in which really, really serious topics are discussed. So what is God? What does it feel like to have an experience of God? What in the Bible should be taken literally or not literally? Which elements of, I'm going to the extreme, of a specific type of early church theology known as um, uh, Pelagianism? Uh, which I, for odd reasons, know about through another context, um, are specifically relevant in the context of this happening today. What if this was uh, an Eastern spiritual search versus a spiritual search that took place within a Western spiritual and religious tradition? The novel takes all of these questions and it asks them absolutely head on in these great big long discussions. There is no attempt to simplify. There is no attempt not to make it hugely intellectual. And it should not work. Um, it also addresses them with complete seriousness. Um, but it does work. And, and, that, and that astonishes me, uh, because novels since the 19th century don't do that. I was trying to think, so the novel it most reminded me, so it, it talks a lot about Dostoevsky as we go through this novel. Um, I, I've read very little Dostoevsky, and so I didn't um, make that parallel automatically in my mind. The parallel that I made, meant, uh, made was to Middlemarch, big, serious uh, 19th century social and theological and uh, psychological and political novel. Uh, so I was making that comparison in my mind. But I was also trying to think which 21st, 20th century novel would this be most similar to? And the closest I came was uh, D.H. Lawrence's uh, novels, and um, particularly Women in Love and The Rainbow, and The Rainbow is mentioned very briefly in here as well, 
um, which are an attempt to talk about the spiritual dimensions of human existence um, in the context of sex, but also in other contexts, uh, with, again, a great seriousness. And they're often mocked for that attempt at seriousness on those topics. They're, they're found to be a bit um, portentous and a bit absurd. Um, this novel uh, addresses those topics in that serious way, and it succeeds. Um, which is which is just it's extraordinary. Um, I cannot. I've been trying to work out what is the mental process and the writing process that Neil went through in order to write this, and I I just can't get my head round what that process must have looked like and felt like, and which bits you'd do first and which bits would come later, and how you would restructure it, and how you would make all these incredibly complex pieces fit together in a way that is natural. And quite often as I'm reading novels, I am looking as I go through for anything that doesn't feel quite right, doesn't feel quite natural. And that's that's also the way I write. So um, that constant check of, is there anything that, that feels off here? If there's something that feels off, I have to change it because it will feel off to readers as well. And I, I, I do that as I read. Um, and in this novel, I, I did find something that felt off. Um, I first found it at page 195. He wrote nearly 200 words of this novel, 200 pages of this novel, before something that, that to, my, to my reading brain, my, my reading sense, felt a bit off. And it's, it's, not, it's not perfect. Um, the final section uh, in the apocrypha of the, of the narrator giving his, his monologue on everything that he believes about life, the universe, religion and everything else um, did feel to me a little bit like a, an authorial thought dump. Um, but that was the only part of this novel that felt like that. And given the, given the risks that the author takes in order to write something of this complexity and seriousness, uh, it's pretty extraordinary that nearly all of it feels as though he got it absolutely bang on. It's it's a remarkable novel. Um, and so I don't, I mean, this is a slightly odd review. It's more a sort of pean of admiration and astonishment rather than a, rather than a typical review. Um, I do very, very strongly recommend that you read this. Um, and I do look forward to hearing what other people say about it as well. I deliberately, as is my normal tendency, haven't looked at anybody else's reviews of this yet, uh, and I will do so as soon as I finish this video. I don't like tainting my own views uh, before I've uh, arrived at them. Um, so I'll go away and I'll do that now, but I'd also love to know what, what you think if you've, if you've read this. And, and also what you think will happen to this book. It is, it's, it's not a, it's not the sort of book that's being published at the moment. Um, I think I've said that now a few times. Um, it's also published by really quite a small press and therefore is less likely to come to the attention of the prize panels that drive sales for literary fiction than, um, than if it had been published by Penguin, who was the, the author's previous publisher. Um, this could disappear into nothing, which would be just incredibly sad. Um, and I, I really hope that this wins a really substantial prize, um, because I think it, it absolutely deserves it. Uh, and I shall continue for some time trying to work out how on earth uh, it was put together and how the, how the process worked. But there we are, As a God Might Be by Neil Griffiths. Go find his channel. Read the book. Let me know what you think.